Hello, hello. Happy Saturday. It's Saturday. It is Saturday. I am off work because it's Saturday. I'm on my Sabbath day because it's Saturday. Uh, and today, I'm currently driving to a Supapalooza uh, that my friends are hosting and have invited me to. Uh, apparently their neighborhood does it every year or so. I was invited last year but couldn't make it because of prior commitments. Um, but this year, I make, I'm going to soup Palooza, and I made Italian wedding soup because it is the most flavorful, tasty, delicious, healthy soup I know how to make, and it is great. Uh, Italian wedding soup, absolutely delicious. Ironically, my cousins got married today, a Catholic wedding, um, and they're Italian. <laughs> So it fit that we we're eating, I'm making a made Italian wedding soup for the Supapalooza on the day of an Italian wedding. It's also a National Marriage Week, um, and tomorrow is National Marriage Day, or International Marriage Day. Um, so focus on marriage there. Um, but despite all this, normally I talk about something that happened in the day, or uh, I'll have this idea, like this cool technical thing that I want to talk about. So today, we're talking about fish farming. One sec. Revving up the engine. Um, but yeah, today we're going to talk about fish farming and what it is. Uh, <laughs> what's the motivation for this? Well, I recently, uh, not recent, uh, but years ago, five years ago, and even past that, before that, um, in my high school robotics club, we developed, a, I mean, we were doing robotics, but we developed an idea uh, for a prototype, well, we built a prototype. We developed an idea for a device that makes fish farming a lot more efficient, a lot cleaner, and saves your crops. Um, you, you farm fish and crops. Um, and we, you know, went on to talk about this idea, and we went on to present it at the... Uh, Maryland uh, Do Good Competition, um, which is a, a annual competition where people propose ideas and they receive funding to go pursue those ideas um, from the school if they win. Uh, and other schools will show up and other groups will show up. So we were against like Harvard and MIT. Uh, and I think, I don't know if MIT was, but Harvard definitely was there. And we ended up first place prize um, with the fish farm. We call it fish squisher, um, because of how the design works. It, it doesn't actually squish fish, but fish squisher. Um, so fast forward five years later, we have a provisional patent written up. We're about to submit it. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm paying the fee to get on there, uh, cause it's a couple of us. And we were doing some research into fish farming. And so I suddenly have, I mean, not firsthand experiential knowledge, but I have a, uh, not tacit, that's the word, not a tacit knowledge, but I have a, um, head knowledge of how fish farming works, uh, uh, and that I've been recently studied up on, so, I figured, I got, like, probably ten minutes till I get to my friend's place, um, I could talk about fish farming, that's short enough, uh, so anyway, so where to start, um, most of the world, not most, a ton of the world's fish are farmed, instead of caught in the wild. Uh, and it's a growing industry mainly because fish grow about three times faster than livestock do with the, the species that we currently grow. Um, and that's a generalization, but it's that's what I was reading up, statistics. And going into future, like fish are probably gonna be a lot more sustainable and you can farm a lot more per acre than you can other livestock. Um, so fish are probably going to be the main source of meat for the foreseeable future uh, across the world. Now in the U.S. we're blessed and everything, we have access to everything at a fairly reasonable price. Most of the world doesn't, um, but we do. So, and I mean it's cheaper in some places, but also their cost of living is different, adjusted. They make less. Um, regardless though, uh, so we are blessed and that we have variety. So there's not much demand here in the U.S. for fish farms. Uh, most fish farms are actually overseas or in other parts of um, the, con the hemisphere uh, where it's more economical to do it there. Um, 
and fishing is smaller scale in general because uh, when we fish, fishing commercial fishing in the U.S. like there's the small mom and pop boats that go out and do it, but commercial fishing in the U.S. is huge. You get these massive ships that go out and harvest huge amounts of fish at a time with giant nets. Um, but the rest of the world doesn't really have access to that. <laughs> so commercial fish farming is not as big here. Um, and because our, our logistics and transportation and our packaging is so much generally better than the rest of the world, like you can catch fish on the Pacific coast and get it to the Atlantic coast and not have it spoil. Like that's amazing. The fact that you can do that is absolutely amazing. But for most of the world, going like one state over distance would be the fish spoiling. Like they don't have refrigeration with logistics set up for that to do that in mass. Um, European countries do, but like, eh. Um, rest of the world doesn't necessarily. Uh, not everywhere. So, a lot of fish, if you're in the middle of land, or if you're overfished, um, or there's a lot of regulations, have to come from fish farms. So it's a great source of that product, that of meat, of this livestock. Um, so that's kind of motivation behind commercial fish farming. Uh, and of course profit um, but it is it's feeding people it's it's a good thing uh, and there's a lot of problems associated with fish farming it's I mean there's issues in any industry when you're taking care of live creatures but fish farms have very unique issues um, number one main issue well the biggest issue it can be the biggest issue is crop failure uh, and crop failure in a fish farm looks like a fish catching a disease and then that disease propagating to other fish in the tank and because there's not an open ocean to swim around in and distance yourself the fish all catch the disease and die um, sorry there's a guy in a GT uh, <laughs> next to me Being very loud um, I have also messed with the audio on these. I've, I've tried to remove as much car noise as I can. I know it kind of washes out my voice a little bit, but I think the sacrifice is worth it. I really, I put in like eight different audio envelope peaks, like cutting things out uh, and then the wave hammer on top. Like I really went to town, like trying to carve out every single car audio frequency band. So whatever you're hearing left is the stuff that has the same frequency pitch as my voice. So I can't cut that out or you cut, lose the talk. Like, so, whatever's left is the bare minimum that there can be. Um, so, just bear with that, please. Uh, anyway, uh, back to commercial fish farming. Um, crop failure, big issue. So, preventing disease in a fish farm is huge. And the main cause of disease is a buildup of algae, a buildup of um, bacteria, of nitrates, of things that feed on fish poop. Um, <laughs> so the really the best way a fish farmer can uh, avoid crop failure is to have clean water, clean tanks, remove fish poop. Um, and that's what our invention uh, focuses on is a efficient way to do that. Uh, and I don't want I'm not going to explain the mechanisms of it until maybe after it's patented officially, but we're able to do that. Um, and it's, we're able to do it so effectively, like, we, if you're really curious, go look up our papers on it, um, on the Do Good website from a couple years ago. Uh, they, we won first place. We beat Harvard, uh, <laughs> with it. And they gave us a couple grand to develop the idea. So, you know what I could do? Maybe I'll reach out to Jim. Yeah, maybe I'll reach out and see if we can use that money for the patent. Um, because I, I don't know who actually has their hands on that money right now. I think it went straight back into the robotics club. Um, but the robotics club dissolves a couple years ago. I'm just curious. I'll, I'll, it's a conversation to have. Um, regardless. But, well, there's some guys on a motorcycle in front of me that are not holding on their handlebars. I'm wondering if they're going to pop a wheelie. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so, crop failure, number one issue. Um, it, stressing your fish out is actually another issue. So, fish farms are either indoor or outdoor. It's, it's one or the other. Um, and if they're outdoor, 
you run into issues of uh, birds and animals uh, trying to get to your fish. And usually you put netting up and such to stop that, but it stresses fi fish out, stresses them the heck out when they see animals above them. Um, because they feel like they're constantly, they have to keep watch, like they're going to be eaten any moment. Um, like birds above your fish farms stress the heck out of the fish. And when they're stressed out, they grow slower and they don't reproduce as fast. Um, ironically. Uh, <laughs> which is, yeah, I guess that's pretty accurate to humans, although we, we deal with stress in very different ways. Um, that often cause more stress. Uh, but yeah, so that's why you, if you have an outdoor fish farm, you have to be very conscientious of what you leave open and what you cover, like put a tarp over it type stuff. Um, as well as where you source your water too, because you're usually, either in either case, you're using well water, um, mainly in your tap into an aquifer. Because uh, if you're to use water from the meter, you're going to pay a fortune, because that water is filtered and clean and like, it's made to be potable in most cases. Like the, the process to get water from your tap is a long, expensive, lengthy process that the state pays for, um, and you ultimately pay for for the state for utilities, um, or whatever local company that is funded by the state, uh, or sanctioned by the state does. Um, but yeah, you don't need potable tap water for fish. Most fish can live in brackish water. Um, Maybe not most, but a good species, a good number of crop fish can live in semi-brackish and brackish water, which is a fancy word for meaning dirty water. Um, have you ever seen, so I live in Maryland, so if you've ever seen the bay and bay water, you can't see more than a feet, a foot, a few feet. It depends on the sunlight and how deep the bottom is, but usually you can't see more than like a foot and a half down. Um, maybe on a really bright sunny day, on a particularly clear day, you could see three feet deep. But beyond that, it's too brackish. It's too There's too much stuff in the bay water um, to be able to see past that. But there's tons of fish in the bay. Like, it's, it's okay. Fish can handle that. Um, so, that's kind of motivation number two. Um, is, I don't know if that's the motivation, but the point is outdoor fish farms versus indoor fish farms. Um, the source of your water and how stressed out your fish are uh, matter a lot for reproduction. Um, so that's part of fish farming. Uh, indoor fish farms are it's more expensive because you have a whole facility to maintain, um, but also you can have more temperature regulation. Like your crop can survive uh, all seasons, and it might still be able to without that uh, with outdoor, but it's going to depend on your climate and the fish itself. Um, you can farm non-native fish in an indoor environment because you can control the climate. Um, but then there's also risks of, let's say the power goes out for an extended period of time and your equipment's down, then you might lose your crop. Um, and it's there, there's a ton of other issues with it. Um, lastly, I'd say the benefit of fish farms besides lowering costs and supplying fish to the local economy um, that wouldn't otherwise normally be there is you get uh, the waste products of fish, and that is poop. Fish eat and poop. They don't really sleep. Depends on the fish, but um, they poop. And poop, fish poops in particular, is amazing fertilizer. It is it is moist, it is hydrated, uh, it's full of nitrogen, um, and it is absolute godsend to plants. Like, fish poop is top-tier fertilizer. So, fish farms make really good um, farms as well, farming industries near them. Um, so if you can have a fish farm, normal farm combo, heck, even your wastewater you can use to water your crops, and that's full of nitrogen and waste anyway. So yeah, that's what fish farming is at a top level, um, not to get into specifics too much, but uh, and that's its uses, and there's more to this of course, but I hope you learned something today about how the world economy works, as well as just how fish farming works. Uh, I just got to my friend's place, so I'm going to go eat hot soup, some good soup, uh, and bring my soup. Um, happy Saturday. Enjoy your Sabbath, if you're taking one today, if you're Jewish. <laughs> um, and if you're not like me, then you're taking a Sabbath, like, enjoy it too. But, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!